This is YG TV and YG One on One. I'm your host, Paul M. Newberger, president of the Star Group and CEO of the Young Guns Movement. Today, we go one on one with Hector Cologne, president and CEO of Lutheran Social Services of Wisconsin and Upper Michigan. Let's go. This show, YG One on One, is simple, really. It's a long form sit down with a CEO, business leader, or luminary to learn how they got there and what they can teach us. Today, we welcome Hector Cologne, President and CEO of Lutheran Social Services of Wisconsin and Upper Michigan. Hector, good to have you today. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, one of the reasons I was really excited to, to speak with you is you've been at the helm of quite a transformation of Lutheran Social Services, and you've done a lot in such a short amount of time. Can you describe where Lutheran Social Services was when you took it over versus where you are now? Sure. Um, so uh, 10 years before I got there, during that period of time, they only met two budgets. And during that period of time, they lost about $10 million. The year before I got there, we lost $2 million. And uh, my first budget, we budgeted at a $500,000 loss. Coming from a $2 million loss, we ended up coming in 67000 positive. And then the next year, we budgeted at a break-even, and we ended up coming in at $2.4 million uh, positive to budget. So we have gone uh, through a major transformation. Now, you make it sound extremely easy. We know that a turnaround of this magnitude is anything but. How did you do it? Yeah. First and foremost, uh, surrounding myself with great leaders, uh, a great board, uh, including yourself. Uh, thank you for serving on our board. I think it's all about the talent and the team you surround yourself with first. Uh, then I came in also, we came in with a servant-led uh, approach. And so we didn't come in, even though I knew uh, lots of information coming in about the challenges, I didn't come as the CEO of here's, my, here's what I learned, here's my direction, here's my strategy, now go execute it. Rather, uh, I started off with asking five questions. I said, what are the biggest challenges the organization is facing? Why are we facing those challenges? What are some of our biggest opportunities for growth? What do we need to do to leverage those opportunities? And if you were me, what would you focus your attention on? It is really the answers and insights to those questions that really led to the transformation, everybody being involved uh, in that process. And I think that's a big part of why uh, we, are, we have been so successful. Yeah, and I think it's one thing to turn around a small organization. It's quite another thing to turn around a big organization. And, and you mentioned me serving on the Lutheran Social Services Board, which I'm very excited to do. You, you made it a very easy choice for me, by the way. But as I got to learn more about the organization, I was amazed at just how big Lutheran Social Services is. Could you speak to that a little bit in terms of how big the organization is and just all of the various services that the company provides? Yeah, so we're about 60 million in revenue. Uh, we're in about 60 counties of the 72 counties in Wisconsin uh, and Upper Michigan. We serve about 39,000 individuals on an annual basis. Or last year, we served about 39,000 individuals, and 91% uh, of which indicate that we have improved their quality of life. Uh, we have about 850 uh, servant leaders in this organization that really uh, meet our mission each and every day which is to act compassionately, serve humbly, and lead courageously. And I'm so honored and humbled to be surrounded by them. Now, you're a very talented guy, and we're going to get into that here in a little bit based on your backstory and all the things that you've accomplished. Of all the things that you could be doing, why specifically serve as the chief executive of this organization? I have felt a strong calling uh, to this opportunity. I was approached by the, president, by the chairman of the board, um, well, three years ago, and uh, he said, everywhere I turn, people say, I need to speak with you. Would you be interested in having a conversation? Uh, so we did have a conversation, and, and that night uh, he went home to his wife, and he tells me now that he said, if LSS were my company, I would hire Hector on the spot. Uh, but it was a six-month process, and, and I think it was through that six-month process that LSS and myself both felt that this was an ideal uh, fit uh, for both of us. And so because of that process, I think um, you know, I, I, it's been a great opportunity. This is a great organization that has a meaningful impact 
on some of the most vulnerable in this, in this community. And it's an organization that has been around for 138 years. Yeah, when well, you talk about how Lutheran Social Services is around for the most vulnerable, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Can you give us an example of some of the most vulnerable in society that benefit from the influence of this organization? Could be a child in crisis who has nowhere to turn, somebody that you know, might be physically or mentally or even sexually abused in their home. We provide that child with an opportunity to succeed in life. Uh, or it could be a person struggling with addiction uh, or core occurring mental illness. They might need that little support um, so that they can live an independent, successful life in the community. A uh, refugee that's fleeing from war or persecution, uh, an elderly person that just needs a little support so that they can continue to live independently and successfully in our community. So we, we provide lots of services to lots of people again with humble servant leaders. Yeah, you know, what's amazing to me is all of these good things that you're doing, all the lives that you're touching, almost never came to fruition. I mean, you, you were on a different career path. You were on a different trajectory. I'm not gonna take away your thunder here, but I know you were quite the boxer, an Olympic boxer. You had some really nice opportunities in front of you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how that came to fruition, how you were on this certain path in your life and the series of events that changed that trajectory a little bit. Sure, thank you. Uh, it all started off because I was bullied as a young kid and uh, that led me to the boxing uh, ring. Uh, my father took me to the gym and I recall my coach putting me in front of the mirror and showing me some combinations and really telling me that I had natural gifts and that I, was, I could become a champion. So it really built up my self-esteem. And then I ended up being a seven-time national champion uh, in six different weight classes, traveling all over the world with the United States National Boxing Team. And is the same dedication, determination, and discipline I really apply into my life and striving for excellence in everything that I do. And uh, that came from boxing. So with all that being said, I mean, would you recommend boxing to the youth of today? I mean, I, I've never boxed. Yes, yes. But you watch it, it is, that is a violent activity, a violent sport. Obviously, you turned out quite well and you're a success, I think, in part because of boxing, but if you've got young people out there today that want to follow your path, would you recommend they get into the boxing ring? I gave up the sport because of, uh, in Corinthians, it says, we're temples of the Holy Spirit. What we do to ourselves, we do unto God. And I imagine myself in the ring trying to hurt someone, trying to knock them out. They're hurting me as well, because it's inevitable. No matter how good you are in boxing, you're gonna get hurt. And that's what really led me away from the sport. I felt that we're temples and we're hurting each other, and it's not what God intended uh, for us. And so I, I share that, uh, I wanna share that first. Um, now, it was very beneficial to me as a, as a kid uh, growing up. You know, coming from a broken family, my father moved to Puerto Rico when I was 12. So just having the structure that boxing provided me with and, and the tremendous experiences, it helped create the person that I am uh, today. Would I want my son to, to box? No. From a training and workout perspective, from a recreational perspective, uh, it's a great sport. And so this might seem like a slight conflict because I'm on the USA Olympic Boxing Board. And I'm on that board really to ensure the safety and health of the sport. Uh, also to be there for those kids to make sure that uh, these pro professional promoters don't take advantage of them. Uh, and to really encourage these kids to pursue an education as well. Uh, because um, it's their decision, right? They're already there. They're already at the elite status if they get to the USA Boxing uh, stage. So I'm there to just provide them with, with uh, support, with guidance, and to make sure that we're running a safe and healthy sport. Yeah, well, just like you're giving back in this capacity on the boxing board, I also know you gave back through public service. You served in Mayor Tom Barrett's cabinet for a while, at least in terms of Milwaukee government. Could you speak about that a little bit? How, how was your time as a government official and how did that help make you who you are today? Yes, great, great question. So I did work for Mayor Barrett, uh, also Governor Doyle. And my last position was with Milwaukee County Executive Chris Abley. And there I was uh, the Director of Health and Human Services. And it was a wonderful opportunity. I would recommend those type of opportunities for everybody, anybody that wants to really grow in leadership because they're really difficult jobs. You have lots of constituencies you need to deal with. You got policymakers, you got advocates, you got 
constituents. Um, it's, it, it's, it's a pretty tough job, but uh, I was very blessed uh, to have um, to experience that role as Director of Health and Human Services. There too, we, we really turned the organization around, turning multi-million dollar deficits into multi-million dollar surpluses, uh, serving more people uh, in the community that had needs, um, you know, initiatives such as ending chronic homelessness, uh, eliminating a 30-year wait list for individual, elderly individuals or persons with disabilities to have access to long-term care services. Uh, we did a lot of great things. The closure of the long-term long care institution where we were really robbing people of their dignity uh, and also in violation of the law. So leading major initiatives like that was, was, was a true honor. And again, surrounding myself with top talent that moved those initiatives forward. Uh, I was also so blessed to be with them uh, and work on those initiatives. I did bring still two of those individuals and they work with me now at LSS. We're just getting started. Let's take a quick break and come back for more with Hector Cologne, President and CEO of Lutheran Social Services of Wisconsin and Upper Michigan. This episode of YG One on One on YGTV is brought to you by Flex Scripts and right now media at work. If you're a CEO, listen up. Odds are you're paying too much for your employee benefit pharmacy spend. How do I know? I work with Flex Scripts. They're the PBM police delivering their average client 15 to 20% savings on their pharmacy benefits. Wow, think how much money that is. Flex Scripts makes sure your PBM keeps their promises and meets your guarantees. And if they don't, Flex Scripts holds them accountable and gets you what you deserve. If only all business worked that way. Stop paying too much for your pharmacy benefits. Get Flex Scripts, the PBM police, on your side. Start the conversation today at FlexScripts.com. That's FlexScripts.com. Welcome to Right Now Media at Work, an on-demand library of video resources used by Christian business leaders to care for employees, inspire leaders, and cultivate a healthy team. Serve your employees with over 20,000 videos on topics like professional development, mental health, and leadership from leaders like Patrick Lencioni, Henry Cloud, and John Maxwell, plus marriage, parenting, and personal finance content. Help your employees become better at home and better at work. Schedule a free demo today to get an in-depth tour of Right Now Media at Work. So not so much, what was your biggest accomplishment as a government official? What did you most learn about yourself through this period yeah. in government? What, what did you emerge finding out about yourself, learning about yourself as a result of this experience? Yeah, you learn uh, how to be humble. Um, it's, it's a really tough job. It's a thankless job. It's an underpaid job. And sometimes you might be portrayed in the media in a way that's not accurate. Uh, especially when you fight to do the right thing. And so one example for me was the closure of the long-term care institution, where we pushed to do that because it was the right thing to do. Uh, it was in violation of the law. And we, the county wasn't doing a great job at it uh, anyway. So we did that. But, you know, they were accusing me of wanting to throw these individuals out in the community. They were saying that these individuals were going to kill others that they were gonna die themselves. And so it was really hard to move that forward, but we were laser focused, we presented the data, we presented the rationale, and we presented the human dignity of, of these individuals that deserve to live in the community, close to their loved ones and family, just like anybody else. And so that was really hard, but I grew in humility uh, and in leadership at the county. How did you get through some of those tough days? Uh -huh. I mean, some, some people are thin-skinned, other people, like you said, they, they, they really put their heart and soul into the job. The people that don't know the real Hector Cologne are saying these things. I mean, what, what gave you the strength and that intestinal fortitude to keep going when those days got really tough? Well, it was my boxing, man. I learned, I, I learned how to bob and <laughs> weave and roll with the punches and, and sometimes take it on the chin, you know. So, um, but in seriousness, uh, it's hard. You got to surround yourself with with really solid people that is part of your team. You're like it's like your family and you really rely on each other. Uh, you share you're very vulnerable with each other. Uh, and we did that uh, at the county. So that that's first and foremost. 
uh, but also my family. Um, so uh, I, my family is my rock, is my refuge. And so I come to my family knowing that uh, they love me, uh, they know the real me, uh, and they also encourage me. Uh, and lastly, just other friends uh, and, and supporters that, you know, you need people to talk to. Sometimes, like I, I consider my home my refuge. Sometimes I don't like to bring too much work to the home, and my wife doesn't like work in a home either. So having those friends that you can rely on, maybe just having a beer or going out and, um, you know, just having coffee with somebody and, and sharing your thoughts, being vulnerable with that individual, and they do the same thing. And you really learn from each other. So I think all of the, that is true. And the last thing is God, last and most important is God. Um, you know, you rely on God for strength, uh, for help, uh, and for, to allow you to move forward. Well, on a couple of occasions now, you've referenced the team that you surround yourself with. You've got a great team at Lutheran Social Services. You had a great team at the county. When you were an Olympic boxer, I'm sure you had a great team around you there. Based on all the things that you've learned, and I'm going to put you on the hot seat here. I like things done in threes. Once is an anomaly, twice is a coincidence, thrice is a pattern. What are three characteristics of great teams? Of great teams. Um, hungry, humble, and smart. Uh, and that's uh, uh, Lincioni. Uh, he wrote a book on that, but, but so I kind of stole that from him. But uh, humble is really where you make sure that um, you put the team, you put the organization, you put others first. Uh, being hungry is ambitious. Uh, I think of magnanimity where you're striving for greatness. You really want to do something that's remarkable uh, and honorable. Uh, and smart is uh, more the EQ smart, the emotionally intelligent smart versus the intellectual smart. But that's about self-awareness, knowing yourself, uh, being able to self-regulate uh, appropriately. Uh, so if you ask me for three, that's, those, that's what kind of came to mind. You had mentioned that good people, I mean, there's good people in politics for sure, but sometimes good people elect not to go into politics. Is there a reason for that, you think? You know, because it's hard, uh, because of the scrutiny that, that comes, you know, like I said, you know, people are gonna, could misrepresent you and all of a sudden it's in the newspaper and your family's starting to ask you questions, your friends are, are worried about you. So there's just a lot of um, attention that you get in politics and, and it makes it a little more difficult. But there, there are lots of great people, uh, lots of great politicians, Lots of great people in government, um, and we just need more of them and actually encourage people that if they uh, want to make a difference in the lives of many, government, and if government is a place to be, and if they want to grow in leadership, it's a great uh, opportunity to really learn. Sure. Yeah, when I, when I listen to your story through, be it boxing, be it public service, what you're doing at Lutheran Social Services right now, two words keep popping into my mind, change agent. And, and I think you've had that impact on individuals and organizations your entire life, your entire career. Well, you're also a change agent in another area now because I understand that you're an author yeah. for the first time. And I'm really excited. I know we've talked about this book for a while and this, this seems like an excellent piece of literature at exactly the right moment. Could you tell us a little bit more about the book you decided to write? Yes, uh, so the title of the book is From Boxing Ring to Boardroom. Five Virtues to Life and Leadership. And it pretty much is my memoir and kind of goes from, from when I was a child being bullied to the boxing ring to education and to eventually my career and now as the CEO of Lutheran Social Services. And um, there's five virtues that are really the framework of the book and they are magnanimity, which is really striving for greatness, uh, humility, which is about serving others, uh, courage, which is about facing your fears and fighting uh, to do the right thing, and perseverance, which is about not giving up, and temperance, uh, which is about self-control. So the, pretty much the essence and the framework of the, of the book focuses on those five virtues. And then at the end, I talk about a little bit about where I want to grow as an individual and leader. So if somebody wants to get their hands on this book, yes. what's the best way for them to do that? Yes, uh, please uh, go to my website, which is www.hectorcolonmke.com. Again, 
mke.com. The book will be available in August. Uh, so right now we're working on pre-orders. Well, and you and I have had several conversations about this as well. One of my thoughts on life is if you win the first hour of the day, you win the day. You know, you're not hitting the snooze button. You're not walking around aimlessly. What do I do to start my day? I know, I know you're a creature of habit. You're an early riser. I think I still have an hour and a half on you yes, every yes, morning. I think so. you're, 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 you'll you'll yeah, catch I'm, up, you slacker. Not quite. Yeah, yes, yeah you'll yes, get there eventually. But, but I love how disciplined you are in the morning. Yeah. You know exactly where you need to be. You know exactly what you're doing, and you know exactly why you're doing it. Can you talk to us, two part, A, the importance of a morning routine, and B, can you give us a glimpse on what, an exec, uh, what a successful executive like you does in the morning? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think it's critical. Um, you, the morning starts your day. And for me, it starts at 4.45 uh, every morning. And I start off with first uh, um, giving gratitude to God uh, for the wonderful things I have in my life. Uh, and then second, I'm, I, 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 I wanna serve um, today. And so I start thinking about how I can do that uh, effectively. Um, then, you know, I, I do a little bit of med meditation do a little spiritual reading, uh, and then I work out. Um, I work out and also have some motivational, um, you know, listen to some motivational videos while I'm doing that, uh, eat a breakfast, and then I go to daily mass. Um, so, uh, and while I'm at daily mass, then a little bit of prayer right after that. So that's how I start my day. It helps me start off the day really strong. Uh, but throughout the day, I find little opportunities to thank God, uh, to thank my team, uh, to thank others, uh, be very gracious, uh, but also little points of reflection. Um, uh, you know, just think about situations that have gone through the day. How did I react to those situations? Could I uh, react better, um, you know, next time? Uh, so lots of reflection throughout the day. But that morning is so important. Yeah, and I'm sure we don't have enough time to go deep into this next question that I want to pose to you, but let's say you're teaching a class on leadership, and I think you would be a very credible faculty member for a class like that. You're teaching a class on effective leadership, and if your students emerge with just one nugget, one thought, one takeaway from Hector Colon, what would that nugget be and why? Work hard to put the interests of others first, and it's really a servant leadership approach, uh, and when you do that, the better the health and well-being of, of your people are, the better they're going to be able to contribute and the more they're going to contribute to really make a difference in the organization. So really focus on others is a way to uh, really lead successfully. Yeah, so you and I have been friends for a while and one of the things that initially bonded us at a rather deep level was our, our faith and we've been very open with each other about our faith and the important role that that plays in our lives. So we know one day God's going to call us home. And let's say you have the ability to think about that in advance. That happens and you start thinking about your funeral and the people that are going to eulogize you. What do you hope they say? What, what, what does Hector want his legacy on this earth to be before your time with us is up? Well, first and foremost, I want them to say I was a great family man, a uh, great husband, uh, a great um, father. Uh, great brother uh, that was really trying to uh, make a difference in life. Uh, I believe that I really try to work hard uh, to sancti sanctify my work, sanctify myself through my work, uh, and sanctify others. And really that's about making their lives better uh, through my work. So I would hope that uh, they would say that. Well, I think you're well on your way there, my brother. I just wanted to say thanks again for appearing on our YG one-on-one -on -one program. It was wonderful to have you on the hot seat, and it's a blessing to know you. Thank you. Likewise, thank you so much. And you're a great person and leader, and happy to call you my friend. Appreciate that. Thanks to Hector for sitting down on YG one-on-one, -on -one, sponsored by Flex Scripts and Right Now Media at Work. We want to feature the CEOs and executives that inspire you. Let us know who you'd like to see by connecting with us on our website or social media platforms. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode of YGTV. I'm your host, Paul M. Newberger, president of the Star Group and CEO of the Young Guns Movement. See you next time.